everyone, my name is Emma and this is Nell and we are your student leaders who are going to be hosting this event. Whether you're joining us in the audience or by live stream, welcome. It's lovely to have you with us for this very exciting event. We begin by acknowledging the Tasmanian Aboriginal community. We pay our respects to the traditional owners of this land and to those who have passed before us. We acknowledge today's Tasmanian Aboriginal community who are the original custodians of this land. We are here today to celebrate Youth Week Tasmania with GYC's very own event, Career Champions and Their Stories. Youth Week Tasmania is an event which aims to provide young people aged 12 to 25 years with a unique platform to display their talents and skills, express their views and ideas and to participate in events proudly celebrating being a young Tasmanian. Career champions are remarkable young Tasmanians from diverse backgrounds and have really shown that living in Tasmania does not restrict career aspirations or opportunities and that success can come from conventional or unconventional career pathways. Without further ado, we introduce our career champion today, Lily Russell. Lily Russell is a fifth year arts law student at UTAS, majoring in French. She graduated from GYC in 2015 after completing high school at Dominic College and attending St Bridget's in, North, in New Norfolk for primary school. Lily grew up in New Norfolk, located in the Derwent Valley, and has also spent time overseas teaching English to high school students in France. Lily's career journey has been shaped by both opportunities and barriers alike. Living and working rurally while commuting for study was a challenge, but empowerment and support provided by the school community, as well as her friends and family, enabled her to achieve her dream of attending university. Lily is currently, is currently a volunteer for the Tenants' Union of Tasmania and is looking forward to graduating and working in community law. There you go. Hello. That was um, a really lovely introduction. So thank you very much for the warm welcome. Um, and it's a really kind of strange experience coming back here. I remember um, all the really early mornings where I'd catch the bus into school and walking up through here and smelling the bread cooking. Anyone who's not from the Guildford Young campus at Gillenorkey wouldn't know, but you had, there's like a bread factory next door and you hear this, smell this bread cooking. Um, and it's a little bit nostalgic actually. Um, so I might go through and I'll start what I'm doing. So, um, how did, I, how did I get where I am now? And where are things going to keep going? I think that's the, that's the big question, I guess, um, of, of some of these presentations this week. Um, so as the introduction talked about, I graduated Guildford Young in 2015, so that was about six years ago. And it feels like a really, really long time ago but it also feels like no time has passed at all, which sounds a bit strange, but some of the memories that you have from your time at school seem to stick out so sharply to you. And that's why I feel like, you know, I was, I was here not that long ago. I was sitting where, where all these people were sitting. I was joining, joining talks like this when I was at school. Um, and then I look back and, and do things like this and reevaluate my life a little bit and I think wow how have I crammed so much into six years and it just it's just a really incredible kind of reflection so I thought I better include some some pictures from when I was at school so that was from me in primary school all the way back in 2003 and that was my grade 12 photo and then yeah here I am today so I thought I'd talk a little, little, little bit about where I grew up and, um, and where I went to school, that kind of thing. Then talk a little bit about what's been happening after I graduated from Guildford, just to get an idea about things that have been going on. And then I thought I prepared a couple of things that I've learned along the way since I left school that I think hopefully will be useful to all of you. One of the things that I had considered while I was preparing for this talk 
was that I didn't want it to be just a summary of things that I've done since I've been at school. You know, I could put up a picture of my resume on the screen if you wanted to, read some things from my CV and, you know, that's about it. But I wanted to kind of keep things real, like be a bit honest, share some stories, just so everyone can kind of get an idea that it's not about things that are on the paper, it's not about things that you have written down in your, in your resume or whatever you might have. That's important, but it's not all of it. So. I'll start off from here. So I grew up in a little place called New Norfolk. Back when I was growing up there, it was probably a bit smaller than it is now. And for anyone who's familiar with the area, it's about half an hour's drive from here in the Glenorchy campus. Um, but I used to have to catch the bus every day to school. So it ended up taking a lot longer than half an hour. And Anyone that catches the bus or commutes into school from anywhere will know what the early mornings are like, what it is like to have to drag yourself out of bed, get yourself prepared and things like that. So it was, I'm not, I'll, I'll be honest, it was a bit rough growing, growing up somewhere that's a bit far away because you're not in the centre of things, you're not in the middle of, of the city, you're not in the middle of, um, of where you're at school and things like that. And so it can be pretty isolating if you're growing up somewhere that's, um, that's a bit far away. And I grew up in pretty much in the middle of New Norfolk, but I grew up with my mum and my younger brother. So it was the three of us together. Uh, my mum had some health issues when I was growing up, so she wasn't able to work. And so one of the things that was a real challenge for us is having to try and make ends meet on a single income that wasn't, you know, there was one person in the house, it was um, one adult in the house, it was kind of rough from time to time. So that's something that's definitely shaped where I am now and, and what, what it was like going through school. I think as I was going through and preparing for the talk as well, I calculated that I think from the time that I moved to New Norfolk when I was about five, up until I moved away from home when I was 19, we'd lived in seven different rental properties. So we ended up living, yeah, living in a whole bunch of different places because we didn't own our own home. So as most people you're going through, you're transitioning from primary school to high school and from high school to college. And at the same time, we had to move house, you know, pack up all your stuff, hike it off to somewhere else like six or seven times. I think it was seven. Um, so that was just like an added, added thing to have to kind of deal with, I guess. <coughs> so I'm not sure, people who haven't been to New Norfolk, it's quite a pretty place. Um, there's a beautiful river that one runs through the middle and that's where I went to primary school. I went to a little place called St Bridget's, which was good because it was just down the road from my place. So in the mornings, my mum would have to drag us out of bed and walk us to school. Um, but one of the best things about growing up in a small community is that you usually, know, you get to know everyone. So at my school, it was really great because you get to know everyone who's there. You build a really strong, rural community, I'd say. And I think that was the beginnings of some really important support networks for me because without that sense of community and without that sense of belonging, I guess, I don't think I would have come to where I am now. Um, every time I end up going back to New Norfolk, I always see someone that I, that I know or see someone that I'm familiar with. And so I think <laughs> I worry that I've turned into that person that sees one of your friends in the supermarket and you stand there talking to them for like 15 or 20 minutes and you realise, oh, whoops, OK, I've been standing in the milk aisle at the supermarket for 15 or 20 minutes. But it's those kind of friendships, I think, and those kind of relationships that are really important. I'll grab the rest of my... So I went to high school at Dominic College just up the road here in Glenorchy as well. 
Um, and I started there in grade seven in 2013. At the time that I started grade seven at Dominic, I think I'd just moved house. So we'd been staying, we'd lived in the same house for about eight or nine years and probably eight years, I think. And so as I was starting grade seven, we'd also just packed up our whole life and, and moved it to a different place. So it was a really big period of transition. And I think that that really impacted me to try and, and, and all of us go through this, I think. It's, um, it's part of growing up, I guess, but it was hard to try and find out where I was going and what I was doing. I had no clue. One of the, um, the biggest things about getting used to going to high school and this transitional phase was catching the bus to school. Before this, I hadn't had any, I used to walk to school or you know, get driven to school 10, five minutes down the road. Going from that to catching the bus in the morning all the way down to Glenorchy was a really big change. And I remember dragging myself out of bed at 6.30 in the morning. I honestly, I don't think I could do that anymore. I don't know how I did that as a 13 or 14 year old. I, it's incredible. Appreciate what you've got now because I don't think that I <laughs> could do that anymore. But I think if anyone went and asked or spoke to any of the bus drivers who work for the um, bus bus company up in New Norfolk, they would say that that there were several mornings where they would see the bus the, the bus would be coming up the road and I'd be sprinting across from my house trying to get across the road because I had definitely woken up a little bit too late. So that was <laughs> a big challenge. Um, I think one of the best parts about this time in my life is that I was really empowered by a lot of people and I was really grateful for the support that I had because I don't think that I would have been able to go to school where I did to try and do the things that I did if I hadn't received support, um, really generous support from the dominant community and not only the, the teaching staff but also the community, the broader community itself. As I mentioned before, growing up in a single parent household can be really rough. And there were times where we couldn't afford the things that we needed. I remember most people would have their, um, a little collection of all their school photos. So, you know, you have them up on your little mantelpiece. There were quite a few years, I think, where there's gaps in between certain years because we couldn't afford to get school photos done or we couldn't afford to get pieces of uniform and things like that. And so I think I was about 14 when I decided, okay, what can I, what can I do about this? How can I, how can I change this? And so towards the end of 2012, when I was just a bit over 14, I thought, okay, I'm going to do something. So I went and I did what every young person does. I went and got a job at Macca's and that was really life changing. As much as silly as it sounds and as cliche as it sounds, going and getting a part time job was a really, really big change for me. And I think it sparked a lot of things that have happened since. And I would say if I had to kind of pinpoint the beginning of my career journey, it was at that time as a little 14 year old thinking, hmm, OK, I'm a bit fed up with what's going on. I want to try and do better. That was the point. And I even found the other day in my emails um, all of my old McDonald's pay slips. And I looked through and I thought, oh my goodness. I got paid $6.37 an hour to go and work at McDonald's after school. So I remember packing all my work clothes in my backpack to go to school, my school bag, getting off the bus in New Norfolk, going straight to work, finishing work at about probably eight o'clock and then having to go home do some homework and then get up and do it all over again. So that was definitely um, an interesting period of time. And this year, I think, towards the end of this year, I realised will be the 10 year anniversary since I started working. It's a bit, I'm too young to say that. It's not, it's not, 
<laughs> so coming into grade 11 was really about and choosing to come to Guildford Young was really about saying yes to things, saying yes to different opportunities and trying new things. It was actually interesting the way that it worked when I came to Guildford because originally I had started at a different school and I'd received a scholarship to go to a different school and I'd been there for probably about a term or so and I realised that I was really, really unhappy and I think that was probably maybe one of the biggest regrets that I have, but also one of the hardest things that I've done is to accept the fact that I wasn't very happy where I was. And so I ended up deciding to come back here to Guildford a little bit late in, into, the, um, into the term, but that was okay. And it genuinely felt like I was coming home. I felt like I had come back to a community where I was welcomed, when, where I was supported, and where I was really empowered by my teachers and my friends to, to do well. And a lot of these things, um, doing music and doing things to do with parliament and things like that, were all to do with being empowered and being involved at Guildford Young. So I was really lucky because I did music when I was here at Guildford and we had a band, we used to play, we used to go and practice in the other part, which was really, really fun. And it was great because if you're so focused all the time on your study and you're, you know, trying to put that pressure on yourself, you don't always get an outlet to say, hey, I'm going to try and do this thing that I really want to do. I'm going to try and have a creative outlet, I suppose, no matter what it is to be able to find that balance between pushing yourself so hard to get where you want to go, but also finding the things that you enjoy. That photo on the left-hand side, that comes from Tasmanian Youth Parliament, which I did in 2015. Um, and that, I don't think it was any surprise that I wanted to do that kind of thing because I remember being a really, really little kid and sitting in the lounge room at home, probably about four years old. And most kids would want to be like, oh, you know, mum, can you put on play school? Mum, can you put on the Teletubbies? I used to sit there in front of the TV for hours because mum would let me watch parliamentary question time. <laughs> and so over the years, I changed my mind. I thought about different things that I wanted to do. But going back and um, being ex having the opportunity to be exposed and go and sit in parliament for a week, I think that really pushed me to think, okay, well, what are my options? What can I do here? As well as that, there is another story I remember when I was in probably grade 10, grade nine or 10, and I was at a careers fair, probably like ones that you've had here or in other schools. And they hand out those little booklets that you get about all the different careers that you can have. And so I was flicking through there in this big booklet. And I remember flicking through, looking at my little book, and I saw, oh, a diplomat. What's a diplomat? And so I read it, and I thought, oh, that's kind of interesting. Maybe I want to do that. And when I came to Guildford and I shared that idea or that um, that career prospect with my teachers, I think one of the best things was that nobody said to me, ah, oh, Lily, that's a bit of a silly idea, don't you think? Ah, oh, Lily, isn't that a bit of a, bit of a big thing to try, and, to try and think about? And I honestly think that I could have said anything and I still would have been supported. I could have come to school and said, I want to go to clown school and I want to be a clown in the circus which is probably a very, very good goal if that's what you want to do. But I don't think that anybody would have laughed at me and that was one of the most important things that kept me going all this time is that I could choose to do anything and I could try and make it work. So after I finished grade 12, 
I went to, I started at UTAS and during grade 11 and grade 12, I did French actually. I, I used to go across campus and I did French over at the Hobart campus. And I only started doing it when I was in grade 11. I hadn't done it all throughout school, but it's something that I found that I really liked. And I thought, mm, okay, <clears throat> maybe I'll actually go and do this at uni. I don't really know what else I'm gonna do. I'll, I wanna do my law degree, but I don't know what else I'll do with it, so I'll do French. And that turned out to be a really, really good decision so far because after working during the holidays between grade 12 and university starting, I got a new job during that time. And I ended up saving up enough money to go overseas for about a month. And I never thought it would be possible. So I did that. And then the year after, in 2017, I went and completed part of my studies in France again for about five weeks. And by this time, I thought, hmm, okay, I really like this. I really want to travel. I want to try and see as much of the world as I can. And in 2018, I applied for a job through the French Embassy in Australia to go and work in France. And so in 2018, I decided to take some time off uni, packed up all my stuff and moved pretty much halfway across the world into a little place called, well, a big place called Clermont-Ferrand. And that was the school where I worked. That was the building of the high school where I was working. And I don't think that I would have ever had the guts to put myself forward and apply for something like this, to decide to go and move to a different country if I hadn't have had some support all of this time and if I hadn't have had the empowerment and the belief that I've had during my time at school. And it was scary. I was, there were lots and lots of times that I didn't feel brave and that I was concerned about things and that I didn't think that what I was doing was the right decision. But I think it did, I think it really did pay off and it was one of the best experiences I've had. Just a couple of pictures of some places I've been. That was at the United Nations office in Geneva. Um, that was in New Zealand actually, but I thought it was a nice, nice little juxtaposition between having fun and going to some nerdy little places too. So, because that's, I thought that was quite a good representation of, <laughs> of university. I started off in grade, in, um, after grade 12 with some great aspirations. And I still have those aspirations, but you kind of learn to be a bit more real about them and a bit more pragmatic. Um, and honestly, it feels like the end of a marathon. So I'll be very, very happy once I actually end up graduating at the end of all of this. When I was searching through some pictures to share with you all about um, my career journey and kind of my story, I actually ended up finding this picture here, which was interesting because I think I was only about 16 in that picture, but I thought it was quite a nice image to think that back then I was so excited to go, haha, I'm pretending to be a university graduate, here's my little hat half thinking that it was never going to be possible, that I'd never actually make it there. And then looking to now and thinking at the end of this year, I will wear a real one of those, all things hoping to go well. I don't know if I'll pass my exams, but we'll see how that goes. Wearing one of these hats at the end of the year and actually making it a reality. So another thing that I have learnt during my journey, I suppose, is to not be afraid to dream. And I've kind of touched on this a little bit, I think, as well. But no matter how big your dreams are, no matter how ridiculous you think they are, no matter what, how small it is, regardless, you're allowed to have those aspirations. And I think that that's a really, really important part of any career journey is to dream about something. It could be anything, it doesn't have to be anything like mine I think I quite I <laughs> obviously had some really big dreams but whatever you want them to be make sure that you 
make sure that you think about it. Make sure that you let yourself picture what it could be like and let yourself actually think, okay, I might think that this isn't possible, but what if it was? What if I could go out and do this? What if I could go out and experience the things that I want to experience? And I remember probably being in about grade 10 and feeling absolutely heartbroken after reading some books about traveling and reading, you know, I used to love reading books. And I read this book about travel and I was so upset, I was so heartbroken because I didn't think that it was ever going to happen and I wanted to go so badly. And I used to watch those travel shows on TV and I used to, um, I used to feel like something inside me was going, I wanna do this so badly, but I don't think I can. And I'm really lucky that I never stopped thinking, maybe it is possible. And getting off the plane the first time I had arrived overseas, I just thought, wow, this, is, this can't be real. This, this can't be real. So I think that's a really important thing to keep in the back of your head as you go through. This was earlier this, uh, last year actually. Um, I was really lucky to be the recipient of the Dr. Vanessa Goodwin Scholarship in Law Reform. And that was another thing that I thought, I'll give it a go. Probably won't get it, but I'll give it a go made an application for it and I actually received the scholarship. I was really, really lucky. So this was at the award ceremony last year um, with some familiar faces, I think. This was from a 7.30 report program that I was on earlier this year as well. Um, one of the things I'm really passionate about is housing reform and equal opportunity and equal access to housing. So. I currently volunteer at the Tenants' Union, as has been mentioned before, and that has led me to opportunities like talking about my story on TV. The final thing that I wanted to bring up with all of you today is that asking for help is part of the journey. I could not have done anything that I've done in my life without having asked for help, and it's probably the biggest and most difficult thing that you can do. Starting back in probably even grade eight, I knew that something was up, I knew that something was wrong. And I'll be completely honest, the, during the course of my university degree and even during my course of my time at Guildford Young, I did struggle with a lot of mental health stuff and it was really, really hard to accept that and actually go and ask somebody for help. And I talked to my family, I talked to professionals, and I think it's a completely, it should be a completely normal thing to ask for help when you need it during your journey. And even if you might think, no one's gonna listen to me, no one really worries about it, I know that I'm really lucky that if I needed anything, I can go and talk to my family, but it could be anyone. I remember times where I would be sitting at the end of one of my classes absolutely bawling my eyes out because I didn't think that I understood something or I was having some troubles at home. And I know that if I needed to, I could go and talk to one of my teachers and they would sit down with me and give me the time that I needed. So regardless of what's happening in your life, because we all have different journeys and we all get to where we, get to where we are now through a whole maze of different things, don't forget that if you're struggling and you think you need help, regardless of what it's about, there's someone there that will listen to you and someone there that will support you. So I think I might be one minute too early, but that is the conclusion of my little talk with all of you today. And I think there might be some questions for me potentially. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your beautiful and a very inspiring story. Um, we just want to start the questions with a simple one. Um, what would you say your proudest or happiest moment has been? I think one of my proudest moments since I've been, since I left Guildford Young, was 
working, working during the holidays after grade 12, I actually got a job at, um, with a government department actually, and there was probably about a three month period in between starting uni and getting this job. And I'd never worked full time before. And it was really, 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 really hard. I was exhausted, I had to learn all this new stuff, but I knew that at the end of it, I wanted to be able to go and see different parts of the world, even if it was just for a very, very brief time. So I think one of the happiest moments was when I realised that I had saved up enough money to go overseas. And then the moment of getting off the plane in a totally different country and thinking, oh my goodness, what have I done? Part of it was, oh my goodness, what have I done? What am I doing here? I think I was 19 and I went on my own. I didn't have anyone else with me. Um, but the feeling of pure joy, stepping off that plane and being in a totally different country and knowing that I had gotten there, I think that was, that was a really special moment. Well, I suppose looking back now with all that you have accomplished, if you could talk to your younger self, what would you say to yourself? I think if I went back and talked to my younger self, I think I'd remind myself to be kind. Be kind to yourself. It's really easy to get bogged down in all of the daily stuff, you know, thinking, oh, did I do well enough on this test? Worrying about work, worrying about family. And part of that... All of that stuff was part of my journey and all of that stuff was part of, um, of what I had to do at the time. But I think <clears throat> I could have been a lot nicer to myself. Even when you put pressure on yourself, you can still be kind to yourself about it. And I would go back and say, hey, it's okay to take a break. It's okay to stop and have a breather. It's okay that you did really badly on your math methods exam and you go and cry on your back doorstep. <laughs> It's okay to do all of that kind of thing because that's how you learn and that's how you make, that's how you, yeah, move forward. Um, I think I would also say to myself to appreciate moments more and to be more grateful because as you're going through school and as you're going through your life, it is really easy to pick that thing that you're working towards or or have an idea in your head and you just kind of move towards it. You know, you get bogged down in all your classes and things. And I guess in that sense, just being able to, um, to stop and take a moment, appreciate the friends that you've got, appreciate not having to work nine to five, appreciate being able to leave school at like half past three. If I, oh, those were the days. <laughs> and I guess, um, yeah, try and take as many memories as you can. So from talking about the past, um, just got a little prompt. If you could finish the sentence, in five years from now, I hope to... <clears throat> that's, a big, that's a big question. So I guess in five years from now, how old would I be? I'm actually not going to share that. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that I will have completed my degree and that I will be working probably somewhere, maybe in Canberra, I don't know. I really, would really love to be working with um, like the Department of Foreign Affairs or something like that. I mean, the, the end goal would be to, working some, to be working somewhere in France. That would be quite nice. Hopefully, hopefully COVID's all well and done by that point. <laughs> But failing that, I guess, um, I really, really hope that I, in five years, will be doing something that makes me happy. So, you know, if that other stuff doesn't work out, I'd really love to go and work for a community legal organisation um, because going through law school, that's something that I've realised is really close to my heart, mm -hmm. having equal access to justice. Um, I mean, another thing that I would really like to have in five years would be a nice stable place to live. Um, it's obviously really hard for young people now to be able to break into the housing market, to be able to access stable housing. 
but I hope that by then I can have somewhere stable um, and a nice pla place for my little cat as well. Um, could you share one opportunity or occasion at GYC that gave you some career inspiration? So, um, I remember when I was in grade 12, I was doing legal studies and because I, by that point I'd already kind of shaped the idea that I would want to be doing law and there are a couple of times during that legal studies course in grade 12 that really helped me consolidate what I wanted to do. So, one of them was being told about an essay competition that, had, that was coming up. Uh, it was a governor's essay competition about the Magna Carta back in 2015. I think it was the 800 year anniversary. And one of my, one of my teachers has suggested, you know, here's this, you get emails about things all the time, all about different opportunities and stuff. And I received that email and I thought, oh, okay, maybe I'll actually do it. Um, and so I thought, okay, yeah, I'll give, I'll give it a go. I don't really know much about this, but I like, I like learning things about the law, so I'll give it a go. And funnily enough, the week that it was due, I'd actually had my wisdom teeth taken out a few days before. So I was walking around like a big puffy fish <laughs> with my face all swollen up and I thought, oh, okay, I better write this essay. So I did. And I actually ended up winning the essay competition, which was really, really great. But I think that moment was really important because I thought, hey, maybe I can actually do this. Maybe, maybe this work's paying off and maybe I can actually make it in, in this legal space. So I think having that opportunity and having that um, support from one of my teachers was really important. Um, another thing was youth parliament. That was something else I'd heard about through, uh, through being at Guildford. Um, another thing that you get emails about. I thought, oh yeah, I'll give that a go. Um, getting up and public speaking in, in Parliament and pretending to be a little parliamentarian, that was really exciting. We also went and did some, we had access to going to listen to judges and other people in the legal profession going and speaking at, at the university. Um, and that was a really important thing too because I had never had any access to university before. I had no idea what any of it was about. And um, we also, so it's turning into a very long answer to your right. question. <laughs> because of the links that Guildford Young had with the university, we were able to go and listen to those talks and, and talk to people who were currently studying and also listen to people in the legal profession. But there's also a program that gets run, I'm not sure if it still is, but you can complete some of your first year studies at university while you're in grade 12. Mm -hmm. And so I was able to do first year French at university while I was currently doing my grade 12 studies. Um, so that was a really big boost, but it was also a really big um, idea into what I wanted to do in the future. Yeah. So you just mentioned a fair few of the opportunities that you were given through Guildford. Um, in terms of decisions, what do you reckon would be your best or the most beneficial in terms of getting you to where you are now? I think maybe a couple of things. I think the decision that I made back in 2014 when I moved, um, when I started a new school after being in grade 10, I think the decision that I made to change schools was probably one of the most important decisions that I've ever made in my life. Mm -hmm. Because I really recognised that I was very unhappy at the time and it was a combination of things. It was a period of my life, you know, a really big period of transition. But the decision that I made to come to Guildford and it was, I spent a lot of sleepless nights thinking about that and thinking if I'd done the right thing. But I think that was one of the most important things in terms of my own health, but also meeting the people that I know. Mm -hmm. and being exposed to different things and being able to shape who I am, I think that was quite important. Um, I think another decision that I made was that I actually didn't, I, when I was in grade 11, I didn't choose to do that many um, pre-tertiary subjects. And I think that was a pretty big decision because I, instead of choosing, okay, I'm gonna go really, really hard and try and do as much as I can, I actually chose to do music and um, some other subjects and, and French as well, but 
I think for myself at the time, that was a really important decision to make because I had found, was able to find that balance between things that I like doing and being in a rock band and doing all that kind of stuff um, while at the same time trying to work towards things for the future. Um, and who are the people that you think have influenced you the most? The people that you admire that you looked at and thought, yeah, that's where I want to end up one day. I think um, one of the biggest people that I would say has influenced me the most and has really been an inspiration to me is my auntie. Um, I'm really, really close with her and she, no matter what I say to her, if I say, I want to go and do this, I want to go and do that, um, she's always said to me, yes, you can do it. Yes, you can do it. I will make sure that you get there and I'll support you every step of the way. Um, Previously, I'd probably say someone like Julia Gillard because I had this dream when I was going through primary school thinking that I was going to be the first female prime minister. <laughs> that obviously didn't work out. <laughs> but I think, um, yeah, I think my family has been a really, really big inspiration for me. Um, and some of the people that I've met through doing community legal work, people that work pro bono and people that volunteer their time, I think that's the kind of person that I aspire to be. Amazing, thank you. You really are just a remarkable young Tasmanian Lily and I'm sure I speak on behalf of everyone when I say that you have truly inspired us to reach for our career pathway dreams and aspirations for the future. So thank you so much for being here. Um, we'd just like to present you with a small token of our appreciation. Um, so thank you everyone in the audience. <laughs> Thank you to everyone in the audience today and those of you who are watching from the live stream. We hope you've enjoyed Lily's story and it has inspired you as much as it did us. And that concludes our presentation for today. We'll see you tomorrow for another Career Champion and their story. Thank you and goodbye. <laughs>